Good afternoon, everyone. BBC changing its tune now, shifting into telling us previous blizzards are normal, and it's surely going to happen again. Time also shifting gears, telling us about the bombogenesis, that it could make 2018 the worst winter in the U.S. Gee, I wonder if they're preparing our minds for cooler conditions to come. University of Alaska Fairbanks telling us Alaska was ice-free during the full glaciation. When we look back in time, the medieval warming period warmer than today, and the little ice age, so let's compare those. Alaska was cooler when the planet was warmer, and warmer when the planet is cooler. So what's happening while our planet's cooling, Alaska's getting warmer, yet they're trying to say it's all global warming. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to ADAPT 2030 and click that bell so you can get the latest updates. So now with Piers Corbin and other solar physicists putting through the media of Europe and the UK that we are definitely heading into a grand solar minimum repeat mini ice age of either the Dalton or the modern minimum. And these nasty winters occurring across the northern hemisphere, snows in the Sahara Desert, blasting winter storms across Asia and the US and Canada, suddenly switching tunes, telling us about the 1982 blizzard, they talk about how it was record-breaking cold temperatures, 60 centimeters of snow. They have a bunch of great images here. And then it goes on to say it will surely happen again. Right after the paragraph that said, hey, this cold weather, it was colder before, even though it's colder now. Uh, just think it was colder back then. It's all good. Even now, Time Magazine flipping its stance as well. Could the Bombogenesis usher in 2018, the worst winter in U.S. history? I wonder if they're trying to get your mind ready for cooler conditions to come by planting the seeds now of it's going to get really cold. And even when they try to talk about the cyclogenesis, guess where they put the imagery? Right over Florida where the swimming pools froze. The snow on the beaches of South Carolina. Water pipes by the tens of thousands breaking down in the southeast U.S. due to those pipes not being buried deep enough. Also the article in Fortune magazine where the Time magazine was overlaid talks about all the infrastructure problems we're having and the knock-on effects. You can just expect this as the grand solar minimum intensifies. Now the snow and the flooding and the ice and the blizzard conditions and record cold, that's one thing. What they were talking about is air travel not getting back to normal, road travel, rail travel, and ferry travel all being disrupted. So just the way we live our lives is beginning to show disruption. And they also talk about show snoveling, how it can bring on heart attacks. You need to take more caution when you're shoveling snow. Now let's go over to the University of Alaska in Fairbanks. I keep hearing everybody saying, oh, Alaska proves global warming. Alaska proves global warming. So it was Fairbanks ice-free during the last full maximum glaciation 20,000 years ago? Uh, yes. You see that arrow top left? That is Alaska and the corridor through full glaciation, two miles thick, yet Alaska was temperate enough for forests to grow and animals to thrive. Another look at it here, historical maps, last ice age. At the very left where it says historical maps, that line drops right into Alaska. Now on to temperature maps. We've been told and brainwashed our whole life that this is the warmest period ever and we've caused it all. Well, not really. Let's go back and look at the temperature record over 2,000 year record here to start. Medieval warming period around 1000 AD was warmer than today's temperatures. That was just a thousand years ago. There were no SUVs or factories, natural cycle. And then the Little Ice Age, over toward the 1600s, more right on the chart, temperatures dropped out anywhere from 2 degrees to 3 degrees Celsius on our planet. Let's take it here to a more simplistic drawing Heat on the left, medieval warming period, cool in the 1600s little ice age. So you can see how distinct these two temperature patterns of natural variability are based on our sun's output. So I'm just going to line these charts up here for you. Medieval warming period, when our earth was even a degree and a half or two degrees warmer than it is today, Alaska was cooler. Top left is Alaska. And when we go to the mini ice age, the Maunder Minimum, Alaska was warmer when the temperatures on the planet cooled. So what do you think is going to happen when the temperatures on our planet cool? Of course, Alaska is going to repeat the cycle and get warmer. You need to look back in the temperature charts. So let's go back a little further in time, 10,000 years here. 
And this is one that IPCC does not like you to put into the media because it shows 8,000 years ago, look how much warming that was, five to six degrees Celsius straight up. And there were no factories back then. There were no drivers of the climate that were human induced. But look how much that temperature skyrocketed. Not CO2, not you, the sun. And when we go through, look at the temperature spikes that have occurred through history. And even when we take a look, far right is where we are with that blue line, which was a model run, not even the true temperatures because we never reached 1.5 C above baseline. So in our next step down progressionally, if we come off that zero line downward, we're going to get cooler. So let's take a look at the real temperatures today. That temperature map shows you 1.5 C. No, sorry. This is off Dr. Roy Spencer's site here. And the December temperatures are 0.4 above baseline. This is the scientific numbers here. Satellite-based temperatures. The IPCC spouts it as fact to prove global warming. I'm going to show it as fact, the output from our sun diminishing. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video.